G'day, it's Terry from The Hut. This month's for our maker's kit, we've got the four round plat key ring. And that's uh, the finished uh, item, obviously. In the bag this month, you'll receive two of the antique brass key rings, and you'll receive four strands of the kangaroo leather, two black and two tan. The reason we've done this is to give you a choice of what uh, you would like if you would like to plait just uh, using two of the strands, just the black one and then the tan one for your two key rings. Or if you want to uh, do a little bit different, have a black and tan, you can have two black and tans. So it's solely up to you which which uh, color you want to uh, make your key rings. Um, the only extra tooling you might need is a pencil or a, a skewer. That'll just be at the end there where we've got to feed the ends back through. Other than that, um, that's all you need. The full round plait is such a great plait. It's very easy once you get the hang of it. It's uh, one of those plaits that as soon as you get into the rhythm, it's a lovely plait. Um, the four plait can take you on to uh, many other uh, items. You can uh, four plait stock whips and all that sort of stuff as you get um, um, better at it and the different leathers and how you cut your leathers and that. This is a good intro into it and a great little item to, um, to have and make. Right, I'm going to start the plait and you'll see in the instructions that you cross over your two strands and I'm using the tan and the black one on this. I've got this on a plaiting stand, but you can actually, if you don't have a plaiting uh, hook or you haven't got a, the option of having the hook uh, in somewhere solid, you can certainly tie this to a door handle. Um, you can use um, uh, numerous other things just to, to stabilise it for you to get the plait going. It doesn't have to be over heavy. But I'm lucky I've got this um, this plating hook, but you'll soon find yourself something um, that would suit. Here we go. In the instructions, you'll see how you do the crossovers up the top. My fingers will probably get in the way with this to see it clearly, but I'll commence the four plait. Now, the secret here is, I'll show you as we go, is that um, your strand, your coloured strands, will stay out to each side. The tan will be out the left-hand side and the black will be out the right-hand side on this as we go through. Now, I'll commence this, you've got, got the black going around between the two tan strands, over and back to its mate, to there. Right, this is now the turn for the tan, around the back, through the black strands, over the top, back to its mate. All right, now the right hand, the black, through the two strands to tan, over to its mate. Pull it taut, the tan, round the back, between the black ones, back to its mate and keep this going, round the back, over the top to its mate, right, round the back, through the strands, back to its mate, right? Keep tension and keep it taut and nice and tight with things. Now the black one, around the back, between the two strands of tan, cross over, back to its mate. Right, now the tan's turn, the top one, around the back, between the black, roll it over the top of the black one, back to its mate. Right, now we go to the black one, around the back, between the two, over, back to its mate. <clears throat> Keeping the tan on one side and the black. Right, it's the left hand side's turn, which is the tan. Around, between its mate, roll it over, <clears throat> back to its mate. The black one, similar. Keep it going, down through there. The tan, again, now that's our plait down there. It's keeping it nice and taut as we go down and get this nice and round taut plait. Okay, I've gone as far as I want to go with the plait. Now, to finish and tie off the, the plait with this little crown, I've separated the four strands, as you see here, and pinching tight with that. I've got to make loops. So there's the black. I'll start with the black and loop that over that tan. The tan, its loop is there. Then the black one looped over to there. Now this other tan one will loop over here, but feed through the black one. See that? As we pull them down, they'll come down into that little square. Just lightly, lightly, and see how we get this little, little square here with the four loops. And that's just putting a loop over each one. And that's where we start there. And you can pull it in just start. Don't go over tight because we need that little center that we're going to feed up through. So that's the, that we set the stage now to finish off the little tassel on it. There's your four loops.
Right, there's our little square. Just loosen it off a little bit and have that center. See that center? Because that's where we're going to come back up with um, our ends. Now, if you see the ends there, see how they've, I've trimmed them off with a little point on them. It's going to make the job a lot easier than having if they're squared off. So the tan one comes out on this side. We'll just go around where this tan one is. Just around there and poke it up. This which gets all fiddly and, and such, but um, well worth it. Poke that up through there, right? That comes up. Now we come to the black one, say the next one. It comes out here around that strand there. And again, here we go. We poke it up between that. Now this is where you need your pencil or your scribe or whatever you've got that you can keep opening these up a little bit to squeeze them through. Right, up she comes. Now don't worry about pulling too much tension on this stuff at the moment. Right, the next one, remember, it comes out there around that fella and then up through the middle. And it really, you'll see its own path. It'll follow its own path up through there. See that up there? Now our last one is the black one around through there. This is where I'll need the scribe to open this up a bit for me. There we go. It doesn't want to go at the moment, but it will. I just felt when you get like this, just, just feed a lead a hole through there for it. Punch that through. There it is. Now twist these. What you need to do is make sure that you've got them twisted right. So when I say right, that that you, that your that your um, your leather is flat when it comes through. Yeah, that comes up there. I'll give it a little pull on all your strands, right? And what I do is I will roll this, or you can put it on, put it on a bench, roll it with a bit of timber. I'm just going to do that with my hands just at the moment to get it all nice and neat and taut. You pull this tighter and tighter and tighter, right? And then you've got your lovely little knot there. You see that at the end of your plait? You've got that. So, and here's another finished item here with that. You pull them down nice and tight. So you can trim them off at whatever length you like. I always like to have a little bit of angle on it. You'll see how this has been finished. This one here, just as it. If you, how, how long you want your tassel straight up to you. How long you want your actual key ring is up to you with the, with the materials you've got available. So, look, it'll take a little bit of practice, but it's a great thing once you've achieved it. A lot of satisfaction when you get um, something like this achieved and and that's your first one and remember you've got another one in the kit um, so enjoy and uh, practice your plaiting keep it nice and taut and neat once you've done this sort of thing you can give it a bit of a wipe over with some leather conditioner but um, it's a great little um, great little item and you'll have to make good gifts too so that's the makers kits from me so it's Huru from the heart